Of all the franchises that we have watched get tarnished by inferior sequels, Jurassic Park might be the most interesting to explore. They all start with a creative spark, a vision brought to life through hard work and dedication, which then leads to big budget sequels, desperately trying to recreate the magic of the original movie. And this cycle is repeated over and over until there's no money left to squeeze, no creative ideas at all, no unified vision whatsoever. And even on the rare occasions where sequels manage to surpass the original films, they will almost always eventually find a way to suck them dry and make you forget about what you loved about them in the first place. I'll be back. My past has caught up with me. I won't be back. But while other franchises go to extremes to incorporate new concepts to take the story in a new direction, Jurassic Park has somehow managed to get away with telling the same story for almost 30 years, while managing to ignore the entire point of the first one. Exploring humanity's desire to control life and clashing two species separated by millions of years of evolution. A man with a dream to inspire, forced to watch it all fall apart before his eyes. With an entire side plot dedicated to justify the events that unfold. One of the first and most realistic portrayal of dinosaurs in a blockbuster film. And from the very first sequel, all of that is out the window. As now the motivation is strictly greed and power and any sense of spectacle or immersion was ruined after watching a teenage girl kick a raptor across a room, through a wall, just to conveniently land on a spike. Hey, you! The franchise died with that raptor, yet we've been forced to watch its corpse stagger along and devolve into different excuses to see dinosaurs eat people. As we see a T-Rex magically kill a ship full of people and escape, just so we can get our dinosaurs in the city scene. Then we see Alan Grant bribed, tricked, and knocked out just to get him on that damn island. A clever way of leveraging his history at the very least, and I do appreciate the respect he has for how dangerous they are. No force on earth or heaven could get me on that island. But they also decide to surround them with a cast of idiots to make sure they have dinosaur fodder, because that's what really matters, right? Jurassic World took it one step further by having some jackass walk right into the cage when he knows that there's a genetically modified dinosaur in there that has the ability to go invisible. But they have him check it anyway just so it can escape and take over the park. Then Fallen Kingdom said hold my beer and had Buffalo Bill sneak into a cage just to get a stupid tooth for his collection as the dinosaur pretends to sleep once again just so it can escape and eat everyone. And it ends with this stupid clone releasing the dinosaurs. I had to. They're alive. Like me. What are you doing? That's how I roll. So not only is the first film the only one to logically justify the events that happen, it's the only one with anything meaningful to say. The rest have no message to deliver. No themes to appreciate. No character arcs to enjoy. It's just fucking dino time. <laughs> And now we have come to Jurassic World Dominion, a film that is dead on arrival, as the entire premise of dinosaurs taking over the planet makes no sense at all. But let's see them try. Hold on to your butts. The movie starts out with a news report detailing the dinosaurs takeover. It even mentions that there's up to 32 deaths per year and the extreme danger of these creatures. But not one single mention of preventative measures. Armies apparently don't exist in this world. In order for this movie to function, everyone on the planet has to be drunk when a single fighter jet can destroy any species of dinosaur. The film explores things as advanced as genetic engineering, yet when it comes to modern defenses we may as well be in the stone age. We are then introduced to our new evil rich character as every film needs one apparently. At Biosyn, we're dedicated to the idea that dinosaurs can teach us more about ourselves. So we had money, stupidity, dinosaur warfare, and now humanitarian research is the new justification for bringing back these monsters. I'm sure it'll all work out this time. It cuts to Claire, the woman who outran a T-Rex in heels and became a legend. She's back, and she's traded in her heels for some Tims and is determined to save them all by her own hand as we see her break out a baby triceratops. And as soon as they get into the truck, they're suddenly surrounded so we can get our action scene. She drives like a madwoman into a field of triceratops that conveniently ignore her and ram all the other trucks tracing her. So the world building is a disaster, Claire is insane, and those guards are probably going to be crushed or eaten just for doing their jobs. Not a great start. But there's obviously a lot to explore for this character, it's been a rough road for her. 
But because show don't tell is like acid in the eyes for modern writers, they decide to just blurt out her whole motivation rather than giving us a chance to interpret it. Are you saving these dinosaurs because they need us? Or are you saving them to absolve yourself? Then we finally get to see Star-Lord, who's chasing down a herd of Parasaurolophus, a species that can run upwards of 30 kilometers an hour. And he's on an icy mountain, yet he still runs them down with ease, catches it like a cowboy, wraps it around a stump, and manages to somehow stop this 5,000 pound creature in its tracks without snapping the rope or losing his fingers. And then he uses the force to subdue this great beast and it somehow works. A fantastically stupid scene and complete confirmation that logic will not be a part of this story. And the plot armor is extra thick for both of our characters. We get our traditional brontosaurus amazement scene as everyone is mesmerized by its glory. Even though they have all probably seen this like a hundred times by now, compared to the original where the magic was real for the characters and the audience. A lazy, soulless attempt at a callback that seems to be the norm these days. We are then cursed with the reintroduction of the stupid clone from the last film. The one who started this whole mess. And for some reason, they decided to make her a moody teenager who suddenly hates being a clone, even though she felt strongly enough about it to pollute the entire planet with dinosaurs, but fine, I guess she changed her mind. Star-Lord and Claire still decide to adopt her to keep her safe. And rather than just having a rational discussion about how the situation puts everyone in danger, they try their best to generate drama by having him say, Why can't I have any freedom? Because you can't. And because Show Don't Tell is like a spear to the face for modern writers, they decide to have Claire just tell us her motivation instead. We can't keep her here forever. She wants to know who she is. Who Charlotte Lockwood was. Thanks, Claire. And now that we're all caught up, it's time for the plot to begin. Now please try to stay with me, folks. This is going to be rough. We find out Star-Lord was tracked home and they're here for the clone. And oh no, a swarm of locusts is wiping out all the crops, except for the ones grown with biasin seed, whoever could be behind this. So Ellie Sattler from the first film has been brought in to investigate the locusts, and after taking five seconds to figure out it was biasin, she decides to recruit an old friend. Ellie Sattler. Alan Grant. She tells him he looks the same and this place looks like shit, but she needs his help, so drop the fossils, old man, you're coming with me. It turns out life found a way, and Blue managed to somehow have a baby. And after the stupid clone gets a bit too close, Blue steps in to eat her face and spare us all. But Star-Lord says no, and she runs off. And in an attempt to prevent her from being eaten by monsters, he tells her to go inside. I'm coming with you. What did I just say? And just like the fire scene, they continue to generate drama in the cheapest way imaginable. So the angry clone grabs her bike, yells at Claire, and then fucks off into the forest. Where are you going? You can't keep me here, you're not my mother. Poor Claire just wants to rescue dinosaurs and orphans and has to put up with this shit. Yet at the same time, she's a moron for letting her go. The poachers grab the baby and then ram Blue with their truck, as the stupid clone rides directly into their arms. Dumbass! Blue pops up just to yell at Star-Lord, who then promises to get her back. So they decide to call Tech Guy from the last movie to get some intel. And he says that he can't help, and he can lose his job just for talking to them. So instead, he meets them right outside of his workplace because he's a fucking moron. It cuts to Alan and Ellie on a plane, en route to Biasin. And rather than having meaningful dialogue fueled by 30 years of history, they decide to have awkward romantic scenes because they had no idea what to do with these two. And before the plane even lands, it's painfully clear that Alan's character has been totally reset just to suit the plot of this movie as we see him act like a stupid fanboy who's never seen a dinosaur in his life, asking questions like this is the first movie. What the fuck happened to the guy who literally had to be bribed just to fly over an island with dinosaurs? Who is this man and why is he wearing his hat? They arrive on the island and meet the rich asshole. And then we find out that Ellie's contact was none other than Dr. Ian Malcolm. You look like you're doing well. Well, I got five kids, you know, whom I adore more than life itself, so. Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm on screen together after decades. And what do these writers decide to do? Do you have any family or? No. So, uh, I need to talk to you. Yeah, I need to talk to you too. They shit on him. They shit all over his face and have Ellie and Ian walk off like a couple as the old man follows in the back completely confused. And then they park his old ass at a barista so they can talk in private. It is sustainable bamboo. Did you know that? I just yeah. Know. It's it's amazing. Amazing. What is this disrespect? Why are you doing this? He tells her that Biasin is behind the locust attacks and gives her a key and directions right in front of the cameras. We then see that the rich asshole is being told directly that the locusts are out of control and they need to put a stop to this. And rather than providing any logical counters to justify his position, he simply says, We don't want to cause a panic. We want control. There's no such thing. Unbelievable. In this one scene, not only do we confirm our main villain is a complete idiot, but it shows this movie has zero faith in your ability to interpret anything of any kind. 
We have already seen it with character motivations being awkwardly blurted out. But even the core theme of the film needs to be said directly to the audience. Because unlike the first film, they don't have the talent to show it. We are then introduced to two new characters after the clone is dropped off in Malta. Assassin Lady, the Biosyn contact, and Curls, the pilot with a heart of gold, who dropped off Blue and just happened to notice the clone. Please remember this, it'll be important later in the movie. Star-Lord and Claire arrive in Malta as well, thanks to the tech guy's intel, and they meet up with an old friend to head to an underground dinosaur bar. Claire needs to take a shit, so she uses the restroom, and as she goes to wash her hands, in walks Curls, who just so happens to be in the same club, washing her hands at the exact same time as Claire. Remember when I said not to forget this because it'll be important? I lied, because this happens like three minutes later. That's how little faith they have in you remembering their lazy setups. After noticing that she's American, Claire follows her out of the bathroom to ask her for help. But Curl says that she can't get involved, but don't worry, I'm sure we'll see her again. So the plan is to intercept Assassin Lady's meeting and try to retrieve the clone. They have everyone in position, they have an undercover spy, they have snipers on the rooftops, and somehow, even with all this, they still screw it up and the contact gets away. Just so we can get the most ridiculous chase scene in the whole franchise. Please stay with me, people. Star-Lord chases the guy through the dinosaur club, and then he has a knife fight while the people in the back are either cheering them on or being eaten. Two dinosaurs pin him down so Star-Lord can question him. Where is she? Where did they take her? Where is she? I don't know. And once that's done, the third one pops up and eats his head. No security, no police, no way to possibly understand the stakes, as Star-Lord is suddenly the Dino Whisperer and nobody is acting like functioning humans. At least the Lost World had enough respect for our brains to make the dinosaurs scary when they escaped, but we need our joke so fuck it. While this is happening, the truck gets knocked off the road and all the raptors conveniently fall out. Let them out. What? You heard me. And instead of using their brains in any way, shape, or form, they stand there, guns drawn, and watch the raptors slowly walk out and surround them. They don't shoot her or the raptors. They just fucking stand there, frozen as she scans their barcode and signals the raptors to attack. Of all the stupid things we have seen release the dinosaurs throughout this franchise, this one might just piss me off the most. Years of training, fully armed, yet they make them worthless just to progress the plot and give Claire a chase scene of her own. W wait, wait, what the fuck was that? She completely missed. Claire is fine here. This woman is swinging at air. So Claire takes this opening and uses her ulti, GG. She finds out that the stupid clone has been taken to Biosyn right before a raptor arrives to attack her. And what is the first thing that Claire does? She pulls the trigger. She uses her weapon because she doesn't want to die. Are you taking notes, my dudes? And since these writers have no shame, we get to see a Claire versus Super Raptor parkour scene. And I can't decide which is stupider. The fact that Claire can not only outrun a T-Rex in heels and leap across rooftops to evade super raptors, or the fact that Curls just happens to be walking by in the middle of the chase and Claire just happens to fall in a truck that just happens to be turned on and ready to go so Curls can drive off and save the day. What the, what the hell are you? No! Now some of you might be wondering, where did the raptor go? Well, it's simple. They turned off his brain and his nose and made him forget that Claire was right behind him. Nani? And instead of just turning around, he decides to take the stairs just to make sure they have time to escape. And Curls, after declaring that she can't get involved, she is now apparently so down to help that she's willing to steal a truck and also offer to fly them out without even negotiating a price yet. What the fuck is this movie? Then we see Star-Lord, Claire, Curls, and a bunch of raptors rampaging through the streets of Malta. No armed guards, no SWAT, just a clear path for our heroes and the only people who get killed are the ones too stupid to see the dinosaurs. Like look at this guy. Look at this fucking Muppet. Not only was he not in the scene a second ago, the direction he is riding means that he should have seen the dinosaur ages ago. This makes no sense. They literally teleported this poor man into the scene and made him ride his scooter into a dinosaur's leg. That's how badly they want to show people being eaten. Star-Lord is still being hunted as the girls ready the plane. And instead of waiting for him to catch up, they take off and force him to Vin Diesel's way on board. Still got it. I I'm sorry, what the fuck did you do? Who are you and why are you risking your life and livelihood for two strangers? Kayla Watts! You willing to risk your life for people you never met? 
You want to ask questions or you want to ride? Well, I'm convinced. Let's go. It cuts back to Ellie and the old man, and I almost forgot they were in the movie after that stupid chase scene. Ramsey, the biosyn guide, says, hey, would you like to tour this multi-billion dollar facility yourselves? He even reminds us that you can't get into the secret area without a key, in case you forgot the Malcolm scene. Dr. Wu has a sit down with the clone, and Wu decides to tell her everything for no reason at all. Another example of brain-dead exposition where the writers give up on any creative methods of explaining their story and just have one of their characters vomit it out to the audience instead. So Wu, the only reasonable person in this fucking building, is turned into an idiot just to progress the plot, and we get the big reveal. So apparently, it wasn't Discount Hammond that created her. It was actually his daughter, Charlotte, the brilliant scientist that did it all. She was brilliant in ways that I'll never be. And then he leaves her in the room right next to his computer and access key. So not only does it make no sense for him to tell her anything, but they double down on his stupidity by giving her everything she needs to escape as she listens to the recordings, releases the raptor, and casually leaves. What the? the clone, according to them, is the most important intellectual property on the planet, yet they put absolutely no effort into preventing her escape. I'm way past the point of asking where security is after everything I've seen in this stupid movie. Just run her down and rugby tackle that bitch. Do something. Anything. But instead, they're both worthless. Maisie. She walks through one door and she's home free. And then bumps right into Ellie and the old man after they stole a locust specimen. And instead of showing any kind of urgency, they take their sweet time introducing each other. Even though the alarm just went off and they are in a secure location. And even the rich asshole is shown casually walking when he should be panicking after the last scene. What the fuck is happening in this movie? We cut back to Star-Lord and the ladies as Curls tries to talk her way into getting flight access. And after confirming who's on board, the rich asshole tells them to turn off the ADS system that they use to keep the airborne dinosaurs away. So with the system off, they immediately get knocked out of the sky. How rude. Curl says that there's only one pair of shoes, something she never bothered to mention this entire time. Was this an honest mistake in the heat of the moment, or just a contrived way to separate our heroes? You decide. And for anyone here for the dinosaurs, we get the best looking one in the movie by far, and a half decent stealth scene with Claire. A brief moment of reminding us of how much tension you can actually create when you use the dinosaurs for more than just eating machines. But just like that bird that knocked him out of the sky, they continue to make the dinosaurs behave like assholes as he proceeds to slap the shit out of this innocent deer just for standing too close to his berries. The plane is rammed into the ice with enough force to kill anyone inside. Your curls and Star-Lord pop out without a scratch, with enough energy for a boss fight, while also not even being affected by the cold. They don't even acknowledge it even though they're soaking wet. We get the incredibly unshocking reveal that Ramsey was Malcolm's contact and he sets them up with a train to make their escape. And any idea of having respect for the original movie is thrown out the window as they continue to rewrite the past and shove Charlotte into the history of this franchise. She had a conscience while they were out building theme parks. She was determined to prove that genetic power could save lives. How dare you? John Hammond wanted to inspire young minds. He specifically wanted to make it affordable for every child to see a dinosaur. And the moment lives were in danger, he shut it down. This wasn't simply about making theme parks and getting rich. He also had a conscience, you stupid fool. After careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. So have I. Yet you lump him in with all the others just to praise Charlotte. Sweet Charlotte. This bullshit character you pulled out of nowhere and make her the most important person in the series. Hmm, where have I seen that before? And to make it sting even worse, Alan sits there like a jackass and doesn't even defend it. Fuck this movie. Fuck anyone involved with this decision. From the writers, to the producers, to the directors. Fuck the guy who set up the lights in this scene. You're all going to hell for this retcon. The train gets shut down and they are forced to walk through the old amber mines. And even though Ellie and the clone both have flashlights, the old man lights up a bandana to make a torch that magically stays lit through the entire scene. Just to make sure that you can see him clearly as they continue to embarrass him. They get attacked and forced to run into a tunnel with a dead end, and there's nothing they can do and they are viciously eaten. The end. No, of course not. Malcolm shows up at the last second and saves them all just in time. Starlord and Curls manage to find Claire thanks to the tracker, and we see the rich asshole deleting files and attempting to burn the locust and erase any ties to Biosyn. But the locusts have other plans. Oh my god. 
Well, I'm glad you asked, Krusty. This is the writers giving up on their craft and basically saying, fuck it. And cramming in a scene that makes no sense on any level and possibly the laziest way imaginable to get all our characters together. But what else do you expect after everything you've seen? They are attacked and forced to retreat up a tower. Then Malcolm decides to make a reference to the first movie. Hey. Except this time, he decides to throw the stick like a spear. And even though it was just a pile of leaves, it somehow explodes like he's playing the forest. And after watching everything fall apart, the rich asshole finally snaps. God. God. And then our team splits up on two separate missions. Ellie and Claire go to reset the ADS system so they can escape. And Star-Lord takes the old man and the stupid clone to try to find Baby Blue so he can keep his promise. You made a promise to a dinosaur. He says, give me eight minutes and I can find her. And I have no idea how he knows that, considering the fact that the raptor could be anywhere by now. Yet they manage to track it down almost instantly. And then, they both use the forest to distract it while Star-Lord shoots it in the neck. Ellie and Claire scrap it out with the remaining locust for absolutely no reason, and then literally bash the machine with an axe, and this somehow works. And then the rich asshole is trapped in a tunnel after Malcolm's button smashing cut out the power, just so we can see him die. And I just can't help but wonder, how did he really feel about all this? Did he really want to help people? Maybe he was actually a good dude. Maybe he would have went on to do great things, but instead he's written and portrayed so foolishly that I don't even remember his name. Congratulations, you've created a villain less memorable than a can of whipped cream. At least that can had an arc, it had an epic journey compared to this clown. Curls prepares to steal another vehicle as all our heroes meet up, and then Dr. Wu comes out of fucking nowhere, looking like he's been crying in the corner this whole time rather than taking action. And even though Wu is just as responsible as everybody else, the film and all the characters just seem to forget about that. Except Dr. Malcolm, the only one keeping it real. Him? Not him. Not him. It's always him. Then, it happens. The stupidest scene in this movie. Maybe the entire franchise. And they saved it for last. This is the moment that I realized that this movie hated me personally and wants me to suffer. Ramsey tells Curls not to land, and she ignores him, because even from a helicopter, she is too blind to see that the place is covered in dinosaurs. So she lands the helicopter as everyone does their best shocked face, and instead of immediately running inside, they stand around and watch as a T-Rex pops up out of nowhere. Do you remember the cup of water from the first film? Do you remember when movies made sense? Now we have this fucking ninja who can stealth up into any scene and nobody can ever see him coming. They continue to stand there and do nothing as another one walks up, so we can have our final battle. This isn't about us. One group runs to the safety of the helicopter. Makes sense. And the other group runs in a random direction for no reason, just to get trapped under a board after the T-Rex gets his ass whooped. And then Ellie charges in, ready to knock him the fuck out. But then Curls, for some reason, decides to shoot a flare. And we get the big reveal. It's the deer slapper. I guess he's just here too. And nobody noticed him. He wasn't alerted by the chaos or anything. He's just sitting there eating his fucking berries. And then for no reason at all, they fight. Even though they've established that he's a herbivore. The T-Rex rises from the brink of defeat like I'm watching an anime. And after making this dinosaur the scary villain in all the other scenes, he suddenly completely forgets how to fight and gets slapped up and comboed. <laughs> And then the deer slapper and the T-Rex howl at the moon as our heroes fly off into the night. And that's it. That's the end of this stupid movie. Where do I even begin to summarize this shit? The continuity is a complete joke, with the events of the original trilogy being ignored just in order to suit their needs, like Alan Grant's brain being removed, shitting on John Hammond's character and legacy. The idea of dinosaurs and humans is suddenly so appealing, almost like they forgot what happened in the lost world, having no faith whatsoever in your ability to think or interpret information, and stitches every scene together through coincidence, convenience, and blind luck, which essentially ruins the original point of this story. How can we explore humanity's desire for control effectively when your only true goal is to show off your stupid dinosaurs? From the men forgetting how to shoot, to the poor guy on the scooter, to the stealth 100 dinosaurs, there's no line they won't cross to get their scenes. The discussion in the first film about the morality of Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movie conversations of all time. 
And it does so much to show the different perspectives and truly understand the thought process of each character. And even with the bewilderment of seeing dinosaurs for the first time, they still manage to stay objective and do their jobs correctly. You're meant to come down here and defend me against these characters, and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. And somehow, we have gone from that brilliant scene to this. We don't want to cause a panic. We want control. It's pathetic. Which leaves us with the most important part. The characters. The one aspect that can salvage any shitty movie if you nail it. And instead, we are forced to watch the three original ones stumble through the plot with no clear direction. A great way to bait the fans of the first movie to watch your crap film. But it's clear that they had no real plan for them. Ian Malcolm is treated like a clown jester, only here to make jokes and mock his old scenes. Ellie's character is totally ruined after that Charlotte scene, and has been sacrificed in order to deliver one of the most insulting retcons I've ever seen. And then, there's Alan. Fucking Alan. When I think of Jurassic Park, one of the first things that comes to mind is the man in the hat. He was the main character in the movie and the video game, going through a timeless and enjoyable arc, putting aside his distaste for children for the greater good. One of the true legacy characters of this franchise. Yet, this film tries its absolute best to disrespect him in every way imaginable, cutting his introduction scenes short just to have him laughed at, pointing out that he doesn't have a family, treating him like a senile old man with no agency, no plans, no idea what the fuck is even happening. But fortunately for me, iconic characters being destroyed is something I'm used to at this point. After an entire trilogy together, I don't have any better understanding of Star-Lord and Claire's characters, nor do I care. But I do appreciate her going from a cold businesswoman in the first to a loving parent in this one. The only thing resembling an arc in this entire trilogy. The stupid clone is a miserable waste of screen time who is never held accountable for her actions. Releasing dinosaurs onto the planet, almost getting her foster parents killed. Every death in this movie is due to this selfish asshole and they never even bother to address it. What a waste of potential drama. But no, we don't do that here. Dinosaurs. Do you remember the suspense of the kitchen scene? How terrified you were for those kids? When is the last time that they actually managed to make these things scary? Now they only pop up to beat the bad guy, and if you're ever in doubt, just raise your hand and say, Hey! Hey! And you'll be totally fine. It's bullshit. And if you match that with the fact that they now look like plastic, I think that's the final nail in the coffin for this franchise. A concept with so much potential has been officially burned to the ground. What a shame. 